the entire cosmos together and are finely calibrated to allow for both complex life and scientific discovery. If you didn't have something like gravity that pulled matter together, you would never get planets, you wouldn't get stars, you wouldn't get any complex organisms. If you didn't have the strong nuclear force, there would be nothing to hold protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. And so you wouldn't have any atoms, so no chemistry. If you didn't have the electromagnetic force, you would have no bonding between chemicals. You'd have no light, and the list goes on. So you need all these sorts of fundamental principles have to be in place in order for life to occur. Wipe out one of those principles, wipe out one of those laws, no life. During the past 40 years, scientists have determined the relative strengths of each of these primary laws and forces. These strengths are so critically balanced, they are often described as being finely tuned. If you were to take the basic fundamental constants of nature and you were to change these even slightly, or you were to pick their values at random, you would almost never get a universe that would be habitable in any sort of way. That is, you couldn't have galaxies, you couldn't have planets, you couldn't have complex biological organisms if these uh, fundamental constants were even slightly different, slightly stronger, slightly weaker than they actually are in this universe. That's the idea of fine tuning. To better appreciate this concept, imagine a machine able to control the strengths of each of the physical constants. If you changed even slightly from its current setting, the strength of any one of these fundamental forces, such as gravity, the impact on complex life would be catastrophic. If you increased it by a little bit, no large-scale life forms could exist. Anything that was more than the size of a pea would be completely crushed. So you might be able to get life of a very, very primitive sort, such as bacteria, but you could never get conscious observers. Now this is one of a long list of properties in underlying physics that seem to be prerequisites for a universe with life. For example, the strengths of the other forces are all important, the masses of the various subatomic particles. If all of these things were even a little bit different, uh, then life uh, certainly life as we know it could not exist. These forces and constants are another example of the correlation between life and discovery. For not only are they finely tuned for our existence, they can also be understood. It's remarkable how well the laws work. And not only that, it's remarkable how simple they are. And that also is related to the discoverability of the laws. Albert Einstein wrote, I have deep faith that the principles of the universe will be both beautiful and simple. For nearly 400 years, scientists have discovered an elegant simplicity in the mathematical equations that express and unlock the laws of the cosmos. It's been said that many of the most important theories in theoretical physics can be written on a single sheet of paper. And this, I think, uh, ought to be considered surprising, that such, such a simple formula or equation could have such far-reaching applications to a very complicated and very large universe. What you have is a universe that is not only finely tuned for life to occur, but also has a beautiful, elegant mathematical structure and a structure such that we can discover that structure. Most scientists just take it for granted that the world is both ordered and intelligible. And the intelligible part I find uh, uh, really quite extraordinary because it's one thing to accept that the universe is ordered, but ordered in a way that human beings are, are capable of understanding is an extraordinary thing. And so the question naturally arises, what is the explanation for that? Many who have pondered this mystery of an intelligible universe argue that it cannot be easily explained away. From naturalistic assumptions, you would not expect the universe to be, be understandable by human reason. After all, within the standard naturalistic story, human reason was developed to be able to hunt prey, get around in the everyday world, attract mates. We have certain skills, for example, we can jump streams and catch falling apples and so on, um, which are necessary to uh, getting by in the world. But, why is it that we also have the ability to discern, for example, what's going on inside atoms or inside black holes? 
Uh, these are completely outside the domain of everyday experience, totally surplus to requirements, not at all necessary uh, for good Darwinian survival. Discoverability of the universe is something we didn't need for our existence. It's something additional to it. It seems then that whatever the source of the universe is, it intended that it contain observers who can discover. You put observers in the best places for observing. That is, if you're going to do things intelligently, that's what you do. The nature of our planet, the nature of its atmosphere, the location in the solar system, the type of solar system it's in, even the type of star that we're around and the location within the galaxy are optimal for making a wide range of scientific discoveries. It turns out that those are also all the most important conditions for a habitable planet, that is for a planet that's conducive to beings like us and without which we could not survive. I think that's just the sort of pattern that ought to suggest to people conspiracy rather than mere coincidence. There's something about the universe that can't be simply explained just by the impersonal forces of nature and atoms colliding with atoms. And so you have to reach for something beyond the universe to try to account for it. Such an approach lies at the foundation of modern science. In his search for a more elegant description of the solar system, Nicholas Copernicus was motivated by his desire to comprehend what he called the mechanism of the universe wrought for us by a supremely good and orderly creator. The system, the best and most orderly artist of all, framed for our sake. And so he imagined this analogy of a workman, a craftsman, making something that worked well and was beautiful. And that analogy, it wasn't one of his conclusions, that analogy was one of his assumptions. The founders of modern science, like Copernicus and Kepler and Galileo and Newton himself, believed that the universe was the product of a mind, that it was intelligible to beings like ourselves because the universe itself was the product of an intelligent being. They were driven by this notion that this was essentially a theological quest. They were uncovering God's handiwork in the way the world worked. I mean, what a thought that we can glimpse the mind of God. We can actually figure out how God put the universe together. This is a, a hidden subtext in nature which can be exposed through this procedure we call science. Though most scientists no longer think in such explicitly theological terms, recent evidence may again point to an Earth far different from the contemporary image of a pale blue dot lost in a cosmic sea. We've often been told, especially in the 20th century, that the universe does not have us in mind. That is, that we exist in a very large universe and that the universe was not designed for beings like us. We are simply life that happened to come about on a tiny little planet surrounding a tiny insignificant star in a run-of-the-mill galaxy within a very large universe that was not intended. Our argument suggests something completely different. It suggests that the universe was intended, that the universe exists for a purpose, and that purpose isn't simply for beings like ourselves to exist, but for us to extend ourselves beyond our small and parochial home, to view the universe at large, to discover the universe, and in fact, perhaps, to consider whether that universe points beyond itself. As we gaze ever deeper into the universe, we are inevitably drawn back to timeless questions. What is the source of the cosmos? And what is our purpose within it? While answers will always be debated, valuable new insights are now at hand, emerging from a corner of the universe where complex life and scientific discovery have converged on an extraordinary planet called Earth. Thank you.